crime has been plaguing our streets for years under Democrat rule. But with the Joe Biden classified document scandal, it's been revealed the U.S. government has been a crime scene for many, many moons. And the effort is on to cover it up, take away your rights so you, so you justice can't be done, and in turn, make this nation into a corrupt banana republic. From government to the streets, left-wing crime is off the charts. A sobering look at our dire situation in today's preamble. While hobnobbing with the corrupt moneyed interests in Davos at the World Economic Forum, one of the biggest mistakes President Trump ever made, Christopher Wray crowed about his efforts to partner with big tech to steal Americans' constitutional rights, rights like free speech. The level of collaboration between the private sector and the government, especially the FBI, has, I think, uh, made significant strides. Hmm. That's right. He's bragging about taking your money and using it to violate your constitutional rights, using big tech as government agents, bragging about the collusion to his leftist friends in Davos. It was the FBI leadership that quashed the story, remember, about the Hunter Biden laptop, colluding with big tech to make sure you didn't know just how corrupt and anti-American the Biden family and the Democrat Party truly is. The DOJ, run by the failed Supreme Court nominee Merrick Garland, is guilty of doing the same thing, according to a bombshell report. The DOJ colluded with Joe Biden's White House to hide his classified document scandal from the American people, hoping to save Democrats at the ballot box in the fall. Speaking of that scandal, Joe Biden made this claim last week. We found a handful of documents who were failed, uh, were filed in the wrong place. We immediately turned them over to the archives and the Justice Department. We're fully cooperating, looking forward to getting this resolved quickly. I think you're going to find there's nothing there. I have no regrets. I'm following what the lawyers have told me they want me to do. It's exactly what we're doing. There's no there there. Mm -hmm. Proving the saying that if Biden is speaking, he's lying. Right after he uttered those words, more classified documents were found. This time by the FBI at Biden's Delaware home. These documents were from Joe Biden's time as vice president and from his time as a senator. Left-wingers have claimed that, you know, classified documents, you know, they can be scooped up by aides and packed away without a president or a vice president's knowledge. But just how does classified material end up in a senator's hands and illegally brought to his home? CBS asked that of Democrat Senator Tim Kaine. Senator, yesterday for the fifth time, we learned about this other tranche of classified information being kept at the president's um, personal uh, residence. How does a senator accidentally take classified material home? Um, Margaret, I, I don't really know the answer to that question. <laughs> I don't know. You see, there is no way that classified documents can be taken or even declassified by a senator. That, that in any way that's legal anyway. That's why Mr. Kane refuses to provide the obvious answer to everybody over at CBS. So while all of this crime and cover-up was going on in Democrat-controlled Washington, the left-wing crime wave was raging on in the streets of America. Antifa terrorists were busy over the weekend in a violent riot in Atlanta. The far-left Democrat group used explosives, setting police cars on fire. They were upset, you see, that one of their fellow leftists, a man by the name of Manuel Esteban Paez Terán was shot and killed by police after Terán had opened fire on police. Terán was a devotee to the left wing's religion of man-made global warming. Now, we can't forget that these are the same people who were rioting with Black Lives Matter for two years after George Floyd, who beat up gay journalists like Andy No, and who are the same type of people who have been firebombing pro-life centers all over this country. All while your FBI turns a blind eye abandoning law-abiding Americans. You know, it's a shame we have to pay FBI leadership all of that money just so they can turn the FBI into the Democrats' main enforcers and fix-it agency. Another violent Democrat protest was happening in Boston, one that led to the child of a Democrat politician, House Democrat Whip Catherine Clark, being arrested for vandalizing a monument and attacking a police officer. 
Outlets that prize accuracy in science identify the Democrat attacker as Jared Riley Dowell, a biological male who claims to be a female. Now, I'm quite certain that the Congresswoman's child will not be treated the same way the J6 rioters were treated after they vandalized and assaulted cops. He's the child of a Democrat, after all, and your current government doesn't apply justice equally. They apparently discriminate based on political views. Speaking of politics, that was what was guiding the reaction to more violence in a Democrat-run city in a Democrat-run state. A shooter killed 10 people and injured 10 others at a celebration of the Chinese New Year. As word of the shooting got out, several left-wing politicians decided they would prove their lack of intelligence that we've all suspected they have by weighing in before all the facts were known. Democrat Socialist Representative Francesca Hong of Wisconsin's 76th State District tweeted, This tragedy is beyond hate. We are broken as a nation to have mass shootings and white supremacy reign terror, end quote. The sentiment was echoed by Adam Schiff, a man who has been caught in myriad lies about President Trump over the past several years. He wrote, quote, a horrific example of needless gun violence with bigotry toward AAPI individuals as a possible motive, end quote. And the Senate Majority Leader, God help us all, Chuck Schumer, tweeting, quote, we must stand up to bigotry and hate wherever they rear their ugly heads, and we must keep working to stop gun violence, end quote. So, before the details were known, Democrats were claiming bigotry was the motivation for the shooting, before we even know the identity of the shooter. Now, that has been the Democrats' M.O. Before we know the facts, Democrats waste no time in trying to score political points in an effort to steal your rights, and they do so over the dead bodies of Americans. Aside from being classless, these left-wing extremists happen to be wrong again. The shooter has been identified as 72-year-old Hu Can Tran. Now, for those of you who are not Democrat politicians, I'm sure you can tell this individual isn't a white Irish Christian. And you can also determine, because you are not a corrupt Democrat politician, that an Asian man slaughtering innocent Asians is sick, twisted, and contemptible, but it doesn't fit into the left wing's hate whitey narrative. As a side note, I think we can safely file anything that Hong, Schiff, or Schumer says in the future as not being worth listening to by anyone. These people have lost whatever credibility they ever had. From the government to the streets, the party of crime is unleashing a torrential downpour of criminal activity on our people. Americans deserve better. It is long past time we united to defund the left, strip their power to harm us, and then tune them out. Only we the people can do this. Time to get involved and get active, my friends. If the criminals win, both in government and in the streets, we all lose.